The Honourable Steve Wan. Be nice. Mr. President, commercial fishing reform is a very complicated John. issue. Uh, it's, it's something which uh, uh, is uh, complex and is difficult. And it is a process which started under the last government, a process which, when I was minister, uh, was, was proceeding under the Piermont Pact uh, title and which we allocated $20 million in structural adjustment to. The government, when it came in, came in on a promise of making this a voluntary process and making it a process which would uh, be environmentally sound as well as uh, economically sound for the industry. Uh, we've seen, after a, re a review, yet another review, the process continue on. Uh, there is concerns in the industry at the moment, though, that the process is starting to uh, move in a direction that many of the commercial fisher fishers are not happy with. And I was very disappointed to see the Minister's answers or hear the Minister's answers at question time today, where he essentially said once again uh, a hands-off approach is being taken by the government, wait until all the committees have reported and then we'll just see what they come out with. The concern by industry is that uh, they would like some reassurances from government about the way that share linkages will work. And uh, this is particularly a, a particularly difficult process because each of the different fisheries, of course, has a different history, uh, different uh, ways that the shares have been issued, different ways that um, quota, or if that exists in those fisheries, or effort has been allocated. And the concern from many professional fishers at the moment is that uh, they may end up with a linkage system which is, and I quote from, uh, from the Ocean Trap and Line meeting uh, draft outcomes held in December, uh, where, where one of the options which they are going to be presenting is a linkage system based on controlling fishing effort via a day's regime allocated on the basis of existing shareholdings. And the comment after that is, brackets, not supported by the working group because currently active fishers would be severely disadvantaged. So the concern from fishermen is that if uh, the government proceeds down the path of allocating uh, days of fishing based on current shares, that that will uh, severely disadvantage those who are more active with their current shares and allow people who have inactive shares, who perhaps are sitting on shares, not using them and not fishing and not actually catching an amount of fish at the moment, to simply sell off their shares uh, for a profit to those active fishermen. And as I asked a question in question time, which suggested that there was a fear that some people may have to buy eight times their current shareholding just to continue in the industry. Uh, that is a concern which is, uh, exists there in the ocean trap and line fishery and also across a number of other fisheries. I've had contact from people in estuary fisheries as well as ocean fisheries. Uh, they would rather see a system which the linkage is based on controlling fishing effort via a day's regime allocated on the basis of existing shareholdings and recent participation, weighted 20% to shareholdings and 80% to recent participation slash catch history. And again, that's a quote from the Ocean Trap and Line meeting. It says, that's supported by the working group because it recognises inactive entitlements but also reflects current fishing effort. Uh, it's a very important issue for the fish fishing industry because many of them have already gone through a number of restructures. Many have outlaid significant amounts of money to purchase equipment and to upgrade boats. And they now face a situation where if they end up with a decision which they don't like, uh, and which is an even allocation in those fisheries, that they may have to outlay again a significant amount of capital just to continue at their same level of activity. Now, it's disappointing that the minister dismissed my question today by, talking, by saying that I was just scaremongering and that people in the fishing industry weren't saying this. If he looks at the Northern Star newspaper recently and the comments by the Ballina Co-op, which said fishing industry will sink, by comments by the Professional Fishermen's Association, in the Nuru, uh, by others, fishermen in the Naruma News, the Bay Post, uh, by fishermen in Illawarra and in Sydney, and even uh, representations made to people like Mark Speakman, he would find that there is significant concern and that they would really appreciate the government coming out and giving some reassurance about the direction. Uh, from my discussions with fishing businesses, they would also like some reassurance about what role the Ministerial fishing, Fisheries Advisory Council will have on the final decision. Will they be advising the Minister on the final decision? Because there is some concerns expressed to me by people in the industry uh, about the pos that possibility. Uh, so I would, um, without trying to be overly political in this process, as government members accuse me of in question time, I am seeking from the Minister and the government some reassurance for industry participants about the direction this is, this is going in. It's not good enough to just put up your hands and say someone else is looking at it. This is ultimately a decision for the Minister, and these businesses need to have some direction being given to them from the Minister about what is possible and what's not possible and not going to be accepted 
in this process.